We're inside uh, our messy casting room today. Um, kind of picking up where we left off. It's been a few weeks since I posted anything on the time machine build. For those of you who follow my channel know I had gotten sick with the corona. I was down for a couple of weeks. I'm doing fine now. I'm back to 100%. Everything's fine. I'm fine. Today we're going to be talking about what we call the flux boxes. These are the boxes that mount to the fenders and up on the roof and below the car that hold the flux bands, the rails that go around the car. This is a mold that we use to make them. And uh, this might be kind of a long-winded video because I'm going to talk a little bit about the history of the flux boxes, how they came to be in my possession and how they changed through the cars. And, uh, and I'll, I'll tell you all about that while we're working on it. Now, process that I like to do on a lot of things that I like to mold, <clears throat> that I like to cast rather, is I like to use this aluminum powder. This is an aluminum talc. It's actual aluminum in talc form. And it's, it's basically, you know, aluminum metal that's been um, powdered. And... <clears throat> A good way of keeping your, your castings from sticking to the molds is to uh, brush them with a, like a starch, you know. But we like to use this aluminum powder. And uh, <clears throat> i got a frog in my throat. It's not Corona. Don't worry. So you have to just kind of be kind of liberal with this stuff. One of the big problems with it is that because it's a powder, it can absorb moisture, you know? And it is high humidity here in Texas. It's one of the things, you know, I'm moving my shop to Las Vegas. And that's one of the things that, that is gonna be really helpful when we move, is that we're gonna have a lot lower humidity. Cause this stuff right here, I can tell, I can tell just from looking at it, it is way too chunky. And I'm not getting the kind of coverage that I want out of this stuff. I'm thinking I might have to go dig, dig some more out. And really, I, sh I should be wearing my mask for this stuff. But I could tell that it's so chunky. I don't know where my other talc is. Let me go see where the other stuff is. Here's the big can of it. Let's have a look. Yeah, that's, that's a little bit more powdery. I'm trying to, you can come in here and just, well, I wanted to do some of this silver powder, but the stuff you have in this cup is just like sand. Oh yeah. Sometimes I mean, it, the, 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 sometimes comes the door batches that this door batches. Well, it's cause it's absorbed too much. Uh, oh, that's way better. It's absorbed too much moisture. Yeah, I remember there was once that the, the whole thing was just like gravel. Yeah, like, see this like is... Cat sand. Yeah, this is much better. So we need to make sure that when you close the lid to spray that... Um, oh, the... The, 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 uh, the, the gas in there that takes the oxygen out. And probably, we won't have this problem when we get to Vegas because we're not going to have this kind of humidity. Yeah. But what, what you have to do is you probably, it, 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 yeah, it's like, it's all, it's, it's terrible today. So what we're going to have to do is uh, cook this can. We're going to have to put it on low heat, put it in the oven and try to bake the moisture out of it because it's metal. It's not going to hurt it to get it yeah, hot, it. <laughs> but that other stuff is just no good. It's sand. Or go shake it out first, or, or, or go blow it off in the, uh... So, um, one of the byproducts of doing the aluminum, you know, it helps as a uh, demolding agent because now you've got this powder that is in between the mold and the material. So it helps loosen it up. Another thing that it helps do is it'll help fill the gaps and pop any bubbles 
That's another great thing about using the cornstarch or baby powder, you know, or any kind of a talc like this, because if you get like a tiny little bubble, a little bit of foaming out of your material, it'll kind of fill that in. All right. So that kind of helps with that. But the, the other cool byproduct of the reason we're using the aluminum is it bonds to the material better than paint. So what you end up with is a part that looks like it's actually made out of aluminum. And even though we're going to paint it, the cool thing about it is if the paint scratches or whatever, you've got a nice weathering underneath that looks like real metal. So that's just a little thing that we do here um, that helps. And we're going to talk about these flux block boxes and the color blue while I'm uh, doing some of these, pouring these things up. <clears throat> now, the, the flux boxes on the original A car, the, the screen used car, they were carved one by one out of poplar wood. And they weren't symmetrical. I mean, they were, you know, because you got one on this side, one on that side, you can't see them together. So they weren't 100% the exact same size. They were all a little bit different. They were just made by hand out of wood. Now, I don't want to go through the history of all of the cars, but you know, they made basically three cars for the first film. And then they made a couple of more cars for the next uh, film. You know, they had one on wires. They had the one that drove through the desert that we call the Indian car. They had one that was on the rails, not, but that wasn't the same one that was hit by the train. Uh, basically all three of the cars were on the rails at some point. Um, anyway, I'm trying to give you the short version of this because we'll go into this in more detail in future videos. But <clears throat> the car that was chased by the Indians that we call the part three car that is now owned by the uh, Shays who bought the car famously for like half a million bucks. When that car was restored, uh, they took the wooden boxes off the fenders and they were all crappy and they restored them and they made molds of them. And I got molds of uh, those uh, going back almost what, 15 years ago, I got molds of those. And those are the molds that I was that I've been using for, for many years. I didn't even realize this wasn't open yet. And then when they restored the A car, which was the hero screen use car, the time machine restoration team, Joe Walser and his guys, when they restored that car, they took the wooden boxes off and they were in bad condition and they had to be completely refurbished. They were not in good condition. I don't know how much of this I'm going to need, but I'm going to guess. I'm probably going to have to do a couple of pours. So I'm just going to go to there. That's an awful lot of material, but I'm filling these three cavities. That might be too much. I don't think so. We'll see. So, yeah, when, when the guys restored the uh, A-car, anyway, long story short, I got a copy of those uh, flux boxes from the Time Machine Restoration guys. Um, and that's the ones that we're making now. So the cars that we build, you know, they, they're direct recasted replicas of the screen used parts that used with permission, of course. All right, we're gonna go ahead and mix these two together and make them hot, which means I got a short period of time to mix these. What happens is sometimes you get a little part A, a little part B stuck on the walls here. And you don't have time to sit here and spin and scrape all day long. Because this stuff's going to pop pretty quick. All right. Now it's a nice cool day. It's a little humid today, so it's probably going to run a little slower. Because, you know, it's November. It's a little chilly. But a good practice is to pour your mix into another bucket before you pour it. And the reason for this is sometimes you end up with just little tiny unmixed particles on the sides and you just don't want that. Now we're gonna go ahead and it's as simple as pouring it right in there. This is just an open face mold, really easy. Don't really gotta worry about any undercuts on this. It goes almost to the top. And um, looks like I'm going to need to mix some more real quick. You 
usually would mark your A and B buckets, but I just, no, where'd they go? So yeah, this hasn't flashed yet. And I don't know if you'll be able to see it on the camera, but it'll, it'll turn white. I want to get this poured before it starts to pop. I'm starting to feel a little heat coming off of it. Oh, damn, there it goes. It's turning white. All right, so if I do this quick enough, it'll bond to the stuff that's in there. Perfect. So even though, even though the underlayer was flashing, you won't, there won't be a noticeable difference between the two. And let's see if I can, how much I can get into here. See if I can fill this one up. Oh, that's perfect. It's the like exact amount. Oh, I love it when that happens. Oh yeah, it's perfect. Ta-da, perfect. I love when a plane comes together. So yeah, this one you can see has turned white. I've seen molds that'll turn you white. This one over here, even though the bottom half of it is already popped, this part's gonna bond right to it. You'll never be able to see a difference between the two. Sleet blue. This is what we've settled on that we've decided that we're going to paint our boxes with. Um, this is uh, called satin slate blue. And the reason I picked that color, we used to use another color that was a little bit darker and specklier. I forget where we have that. We might have put it away anyway. So there's been a lot of argument ad nauseum over the color of the flux boxes. Are they gray? Are they silver? Are they blue? <clears throat> I've talked to Kevin Pike about this and listen, I think his memory's a little foggy after um, 35 years and he'll get mad at me for saying this because we've argued about this so much, but I've done some research and I have a little bit to back it up. We've looked at some of the pre-production Polaroids that were taken uh, during production. And the boxes seem to be very metallic blue. Kevin Pike, who built the original car, he seems to remember them being gray or silver. But um, one of the cars that we found uh, that had screen used parts on, it's kind of a long story and I'll try and explain this, but at the end of part three, the B car, which was the second unit car, was the car that was hit by the train and all the parts were splattered all over the railroad tracks. Well, those parts, along with the crashed train car, was sold to a guy named Jay Orberg. He used to work with uh, George Barris, and they built uh, you know, movie cars like the Batmobile and things like that. And what he did was he took the scattered parts and put them on a new DeLorean and made a new replica using those parts. He also took the smashed car, welded it back together. He sold that to Planet Hollywood in Honolulu, where it stayed for many years. And then the Shays also bought that car. And that other car that he built, the replica, he sold to the Hollywood Casino in Tunica, Mississippi. Well, I visited the casino and I examined the car and I realized that there were screen used parts on the car. And how I figured that out is there was so many really good, accurate parts mixed in with really wrong parts. And there's no way that you would get this one thing right and this other thing wrong. There's just no way that would have happened. And, and when I examined these flux boxes that were in the car, I could see that they had been damaged and glued back together. And I examined their color carefully and they were a metallic blue. And you could see where the wood had been broken away. The reason the wood was broken away is because when the train hit the car, it busted the rails off and snapped the wood and it broke them off the fenders. And you could see the layer of of, of primer underneath, and then you could see this metallic blue paint. And so I replicated that metallic blue paint as best as I could, and that was the color that I used on our replicas. We've done like 35 replicas, you know, so the first, you know, 20 however many replicas had that color on it. 
But there was so much argument over the color of whether or not it was this metallic blue or a lighter gray. So some builders would use gray, some builders would use this blue. We've decided kind of uh, as a collection to use the screen used a car restoration as the new gold standard and to try to replicate the color that they used and so i went with that lighter slate blue and that's the blue that we're using on the car so let's talk about the color blue for just a second because this is just something that drives me crazy and i'm speaking to the other delorean time machine builders out there other than a few blue wires and these blue boxes there's nothing blue on the car, well, you got the two blue capacitors, but there are no blue lights on the DeLorean time machine. The DeLorean only has one blue light. It has a high beam indicator in the dash cluster. That's it. Otherwise, there's no blue lights. There's no blue lights in the doors. There's no blue lights in the wheel wells. There's no blue lights under the foot wells, under the car, on the back of the car. There, you know, these guys out there like to turn their cars into these carnivals. And they put little flashing lights and they put in green lights and blue lights and they go crazy with the LEDs and it just looks ridiculous. And it's the difference between building a true replica of the car as it was designed and then just strapping random crap that you bought at the mall onto a DeLorean. And uh, this is something that us time machine builders fight about all the time. This is just my opinion. My goal is to build replicas of the car that was designed by by Ron Cobb, Andrew Probert, Kevin Pike, Mike Chaffe, Lantier and his team, the guys that built the DeLorean time machine under the, the direction of Bob Zemeckis and Bob Gale and Steven Spielberg to replicate that car as best we can. There are a few alterations that we make to our replicas for the purpose of weatherproofing and safety but they aren't design changes when it comes to, uh, you know, color and uh, familiar, familiar things of the car. So there's no blue lights found anywhere on the DeLorean time machine, except for the high beam indicator. So even if you ever find one of our, we would never put, it's, it's just something that drives me crazy. I mean, listen, it's your car, you can do whatever you want with it. I just wanted to rant. All right, so this car is being built right now. This is actually gonna be my car. And uh, here is a finished flux box uh, that was made earlier. And you can see the kind of the color that we put on here. It's already got the metal plates on here. It's been mounted to the car. We put stainless steel bolts that go all the way through here, through the fenders. So this is on there really well. It's not coming off. Uh, we do drill holes in the car. But uh, there's a couple of subtle little differences in the boxes that we got that came off the A car versus the other car I'm going to show you uh, up top. So here's a little bit of weirdness. I don't know if you could see this. See this little, little cut that's on the bottoms? Uh, don't really know the purpose of those, but that's something that's a little bit different from the other ones that we used to use, the ones that were on the part three car. And the part three car was just kind of cobbled together. It was just supposed to be used for the second unit scenes where it wasn't gonna be seen close up. Uh, but the other interesting thing is these, the left and right are not symmetrical. You know, the width in between this little section here and there is not the same. It's, they're two, one of them is like a quarter inch bigger than the other one, like entirely. And that's just the way it is which is one of the reasons that this bar is separated that holds what we call the wormhole emitter. But um, there's just a lot of weirdness with the boxes and it's because they were handmade, uh, hand carved, you know, they weren't done in a precision way, the way we do things now. You know, back in the eighties, you know, they were using a table saw and uh, some clamps and some wood glue and they just, cobble these things together. I mean, they didn't know Back to the Future was going to be the biggest movie in the world. They didn't know that people were going to be making replicas of the car 35 years later. They figured it was another one of these goofy movies. They were going to shoot for a couple of weeks and then they were going to go on and do the next goofy movie. So, you know, uh, it's a whole different thing now. 
when they make movies. But anyway, so recreating all of this stuff um, has been a challenge. The Time Machine Restoration guys, Joe and his team, they did a fantastic job restoring and remanufacturing the boxes based on the original wooden ones. Um, and they made molds. And, um, you know, I got Joe gave me a right and a left and one rear. And <clears throat> that's uh, how we make these. So I, I try to make the car with as many of the original real parts or at least replicas of those parts as possible. And then um, you can come in here if you want. Matter of fact, this is perfect. You know, here's the rears. So the rear, there's just one rear and the rear is just, you know, flipped over one way or the other. These brackets mount where the heat shielding on the other side of the uh, exhaust would go. And then, uh, you know, the bottom parts, the rails connect to them. So uh, perfect timing actually to bring those in. But um, yeah, that's the rear, not much to it. Put that there. I'll get out of the way so EJ can continue working on the railing here. The bands are probably one of the hardest things to do on the whole car. Any time machine builder will tell you that that is the hardest thing to do. It's, it's difficult. You can kind of see the process of what's happening here. You know, we, we, um, we take this three quarter inch pipe and it has to be bent in perfect parallel. Um, and then actually we, we have to section it off because you could never use the full length piece of pipe. So that gets bonded and this gets hidden really well because we do it in a place where there's a clamp that's supposed to be there. So that clamp goes directly over and covers it. Um, the rubber brackets that we make, they, they are bolted to the car. You can see here, there's this metal retaining plate. We use a big, thick metal uh, self-tapper screws that hold these brackets on very tightly. And um, it's just, how we've always done it. And it was, it was how they, they did the original car. But getting these to be perfectly parallel is really difficult. You'll see in a lot of the poor reproductions, some of the other guys didn't do such a good job, sorry. They get what we call the pork chop because they'll have this big wall right here, you know, like where this needs to be the exact same size. It needs to carry and flow all the way through here. And you, and you could see in the rubber brackets where these these little channels on the original car, they used a 10 millimeter white phosphorescent uh, neon, which is a high color temperature. So they used actual glass tubing neon that ran through here, hooked up to like a 15,000 volt transformer. And that's how they got that, that white glow. But the thing about high color temperature uh, neon is if you've ever used an old 80s video camera, you know that you have to do a white balance. And if you would go under fluorescent lights, they would, it would look blue, right? Or if you had the warm filter on and you went outside into the sunlight, it would turn blue. And that's why when you watch the film, when the flux bands light up, they kind of have a little bit of a bluish tinge because they were lighting the scenes with incandescent, you know, mole lights, you know, mole Richardson lights. And then that contrast of the white neon, they appeared very blue, and then Industrial Light and Magic added the lightning effects. And through the years, it just kept getting bluer and bluer because every time they would make a toy or a painting or a picture, these artists would put blue in there to represent electricity. But again, going back to my rant from earlier, go put in the movie, get your beta, get your VHS, get your DVD, your Blu-ray, your 4K, I don't care which one you got, and look at it carefully. The car's bands are white. And the cartoon that ILM drew around the car of lightning is bluish. But bluish and blue are two different things. There's a big difference between a, a very high color temperature blue, like what these guys put on their cars, these LED car lights, and then a Smurf. All right, that's enough of an update today. A little lesson on the flux boxes. Didn't get into too much detail, but I mean, listen, we'd be here for hours talking about this stuff. I know you guys are just a little bit interested in uh, how we build these cars. A lot of the parts we have to make out of plastic, some out of fiberglass, some out of metal. And sometimes we use the real parts whenever possible. Um, 
But hey, listen, we have uh, we've built like 35 of these cars and I think we've got another four to build right now. That one in there we're finishing uh, for Vegas. Today, uh, as of this recording, I've signed the papers, sent them the money. I officially own the new property in Vegas. I'll be officially moving out there starting in the next week or so. Just got to get my truck ready, get the bus ready, get the trailer ready. Uh, and we'll start taking loads out there. We're about to deliver this Bluesmobile in the background to a customer. That's going to be the last one of those we probably ever do, I would imagine. Not going to be taking any more orders for the uh, Knight Rider car. Speaking of Knight Rider car, people have been asking me about the Knight Rider 4000 car. We did get the nose fixed. Omar did a great job on this thing. Uh, we're getting it primered and getting it ready, and we're going to go ahead and paint it. And uh, we're going to go ahead and basically finish the car. We're not going to fix the engine, I don't believe, but we're going to get it red and then we're going to put it up for sale because uh, I don't want to have to take it to Vegas with me. So the Knight Rider 4000, this is a screen used Knight Rider 4000 car. If you want to learn more about this, go back and look at some of my other videos. Just search for Knight Rider 4000 car or visit my Facebook group where we talk about the car. It's the uh, Knight Rider 4000, Knight Rider 2000, the movie car. You, you'll find it. Anyway, we got a lot to do to get ready. Stay tuned, I'll be trying to post more videos daily as I can. There's only <laughs> so much we could talk about, but I thought I'd share with you what it's like to make some of these parts. Hey, you wanna see how they came out before we leave? Come on, let's go back inside before we split and I'll show you how they came out. I need a glove. <clears throat> I know I was wrapping up, but hey, what the hell, I'm gonna show you how these came out. They're probably pretty hot but they're done. Yeah, I could see it's separated already. These are really simple to demold. Oh yeah, these are warm. These are toasty. Oh yeah. Oh, that's beautiful, beautiful. And there you go, ooh, it's warm. These are hot. So yeah, it comes out a nice silvery texture um, and it just adds a little bit of extra, you know, underlying weathering in case a little bit of the paint comes off. Oh yeah, that came out nice. That's nice and warm. I'd say it's probably about 120 degrees. Uh, it's an exothermic reaction. But yeah, I mean, these demold really fast. And look how clean that came out. I mean, it just, it literally just slides out of here. Look at this. This makes your mold last a lot longer too. Now remember this side was the one that I had to double pour and you'll see there's no seam, nothing. You can't really even tell where the line is from where that was. Always turn your molds upside down so you don't get any dust in them. Here's that rear. Now the thing is, is we just do one rear because we have to do four of these, right? So if we do pour two of those, pour one of these, you end up with the right amount when you're all done. <clears throat> there we go. And there's the rear. Just break, break this extra flashing off. Pretty simple. And that's how you do a set of flux boxes straight out of the molds. All right, guys, hey. Thanks for watching. If you're enjoying this series of us building the DeLorean time machine, make sure to subscribe and uh, hit that like button. It really helps, helps us out on YouTube. It helps push us up the recommended section. If you have friends that are into this kind of thing, share this to them. They may really enjoy it. Drop the bucket. At least I didn't kick the bucket. Hey, thanks for all your concern of everybody who was worried about me while I was sick. I'm doing great. Survived, I'm 100% back to normal. I'll see you on the next video, guys. Thanks for watching. I'm VideoBot.